If we took this into account, a kilowatt hour produced from wind would be much cheaper than all other sources. This means that what's happening today is we have to somehow compensate the production of a wind kilowatt hour so we can actually buy it at a coherent price. Wind power is mankind's most ancient source of energy. The first sailboats were invented around 5000 BC and relied on the wind to transport people and goods over remarkably long distances. The first windmills were built in Asia 2000 years ago and were adopted in Europe in the Middle Ages. Nowadays, we have these rather fascinating devices, aerogenerators. These modern windmills are extremely sensitive mechanisms and only start operating when wind velocity reaches four or five meters per second. The movements of the rotors feeds a generator and the resulting energy goes directly to end users. Their total share of power production is still relatively low. Even the most productive aeolic generators don't have a capacity of more than a thousand kilowatt hours. However, modern prototypes reportedly produce up to 3,000. I think we are still pretty green, pretty immature, and we have a long, long way to go. Technically, we can easily go much, much further. Energy from windmills could easily supply 20 or 30 percent of our needs. There are no technical problems inhibiting us from reaching that level. Wind power currently generates 2 percent of the world's electricity, but it's expected to increase its share to 3 percent by the year 2006. At this stage of the game, it's the most advanced of all the renewable energy sources, but it's not the only one. They usually grow by the roadside, and when we see them, we do our best to avoid them. Nobody wants to get pricked, right? Of course, farmers hate them because they ruin crops. Yet, lo and behold, they hold the key to one of the safest alternative energy sources we might exploit in the years to come. It's the common thistle, and it just might be a fine source of fuel in the near future. Obtaining energy from biomass entails the use of each and every renewable organic resource. Its surprising possibilities take us back to the origins of mankind. Wood was one of man's first fuels. Of course, we still burn wood, but the range of organic fuel sources is so much wider now. Today, there are power plants operating on straw and almond shells. The generation of energy from organic material has as a byproduct CO2. But this would be absorbed by the very plants that would then be used to produce more energy. The net result would actually be a win-win situation. Biomass, like all the other renewable energy sources, is very environmentally friendly.
14% of our current energy consumption comes from biomass. But once again, we have to explain our numbers. Most of that energy, as much as 90%, is generated and consumed by developing countries. Biomass sources satisfy the energy requirements of some 2 billion of the poorest people in the world. Meanwhile, the developed world is hard at work developing new technologies to take full advantage of these plentiful sources of clean energy. Our planet receives from the sun 4,000 times more energy than we consume. This is expected to continue for the next 5 billion years or so. From our humble perspective, it might seem like solar energy was practically infinite. The outer layer of our atmosphere receives on average 340 watts of light and heat per square meter. Clouds or ice or snow masses reflect about 30% of that. But even so, the sun sends us over 120 billion megawatts of energy. In order to produce that much energy, we would need 21 million nuclear power plants. Solar energy heats the earth and the water in the oceans. Plants use it for photosynthesis. Mankind is doing its best to develop ways to harness solar power to meet our daily energy needs. These panels are designed to capture heat from the sun in the form of infrared radiation. They are located in Almería, in southern Spain, at the largest European solar energy research center. The result is perfectly practical for everyday needs. Solar energy heats water and powers heating systems. And best of all, it's very inexpensive. If we had fields of solar energy collectors like this one, we could collect enough heat to generate electric power or operate factories and anti-pollution devices. But the future of solar energy depends on photovoltaic cells, which are semiconductors that transform light into electricity. They work all right in wristwatches or calculators, but they're still too expensive and rudimentary for tasks of greater dimension. At this stage, they can only use 18% of the total amount of energy they receive. The most optimistic scenarios predict that solar energy will reach a level of significant production in about 2015. By then, more powerful storage cells will be cheaper and much more efficient. Those cells might one day be placed in outer space to collect solar energy directly from the sun. The development of renewable energy sources is conditioning certain technological considerations and political, administrative, and social considerations as well. From a technological point of view, their evolution is unique. Over the past 20 years, wind power has evolved a great deal. And technically speaking, it has become very reliable, inexpensive, and a profitable source of energy. Photovoltaic energy, on the other hand, is taking longer to become profitable. Instead of 20 years, it may take 30 or 40 years. But we are definitely on the right path. At any rate, certain political positions are holding back its progress. And only political decisions can provide the necessary boost that the field of renewable energy requires to become viable. This futuristic scene could become reality relatively soon. Sophisticated devices orbiting the Earth. Machines designed to collect solar light, turn it into microwaves, and relay that energy to a system of Earth-based antennas. To collect the same amount of energy produced by a 1 billion kilowatt nuclear power plant, however, we would need to assemble a 1 kilometer square network of solar panels. It would only weigh about 800 tons. <laughs> 